Hello, and welcome to another broadcast with Gion. Watching this program, you are going to be inspired, challenged, and enlightened. Now, let me introduce to you our host, Gion. The first thing that I have to say about the intelligent budget is that basically intelligent people use a budget. Meaning what? That those that do not have a budget are fools, ignorant, people that are not uh, using their money properly. And uh, as a result of that, failure, chaos, problems, more drama. Intelligent people take their time to study everything they do. You realize that, right? Intelligent people, they, they review their lives. How are they doing? And when it's about their money, they are careful. Intelligent budget means that, that you will take your time to study your debts, your income, your responsibilities. And of course, you need to consider savings. You need to consider everything else, donations that you, go, you give to charities, to church, etc. You need to help the poor if there are individuals that are asking for your help. Of course, intelligent people will reflect about their budgets. For those who believe in the Bible, I am one of those. Since I started to work, my parents told me the importance of giving to the Lord the 10% of my income. I was only 17 years old when I remember my mom and my dad saying to me that they show me the scripture, the importance of giving to God and honoring God with that. And I have applied that for all my life. I don't find in giving to the Lord an issue. I don't have in giving to people an issue. I don't have in paying my taxes an issue because I understand that in everything, there has to be a portion of money that everyone needs to get. Therefore, as an intelligent person, you should have a budget considering those things. There are occasions when you get debts, whether it's for your mortgage, for purchasing a vehicle, for example, or credit cards. Well, those are responsibilities. At the same time, there are other bills that are necessary in your life that you cannot simply ignore. Well, you need to take care of those things. When you don't have a budget, you just start spending money, spending money. You acting like a child. And I have to tell you this story many, many years ago. I remember I was teaching about money management. And one of the ladies in my class, she said to me, um, how can I teach these things to my children? And, uh, and I said, well, it's very simple. Explain to her about the balance in your checking account and explain to her about the purpose of a check, the purpose of a debit card and how the credit card works, stuff like that. So the following week, she comes back for the class and she told us this true story, this anecdote. So that week she was working with the budget and she knew she couldn't spend any more money. That was it. Very carefully, she was following my tip. I said to her, you open envelopes with the title for everything that you need to spend for bills or food or this and that. And she was putting the cash in each envelope, right? Well, there was a, an envelope for uh, having fun with the kids and the, the envelope had zero balance. <laughs> there was no more money there. One of the kids asked her, hey, mama, what if we go and get us some ice cream? And then she said, the mama intelligently said, um, check in that drawer, you know, uh, there is an envelope there, money for having fun. The girl comes, opens the drawer, gets the envelope, there is nothing and said, there is no money in this envelope. I told you, we don't have any money there. And then the girl said, what if we just write a check? Now, the funny part about this, 
is that the girl was under the impression that you just write a check and magically you just go to the bank and they will give you the amount that you are writing on the check. Some people are just like that little girl. They just think that they can just write checks or put the debit card here again and again and again and magically the bank is going to provide the funds for that transaction. <laughs> Don't act like a child, my friend. Be smart, prepare your budget, and you will not have problems. Stick with the budget. That's intelligent. Intelligent, intelligent budget. Have a good day. Hey, 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 hey. That's all, that's all, that's all, folks. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> Ciao. By Giancarlo Vitutoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video.